Hello, Cowdy Pokes. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our first video covering QuickBooks 2013. We are in the new. We are out with the old. That's right, because if you're not here, you're out in the cold. Okay, so for this video, we're going to create a new company. This is going to be mainly for beginners. Everybody's welcome to join the fiesta, of course. Okay, and this is what we're going to do. Uh, over here, there's a button that says create new company, and I'm going to click that. Then you get taken to the screen. You have an option over here that says express start, recommended for new users. Yes, I do actually, uh, but uh, for this video, we're going to try to step it up a little bit. We're going to go to detailed start, and that way we can just uh, be a little bit more detailed with what we do. So I'm going to click that. And now it's taken us to the screen where it wants you to enter your company's information. You'll notice on the left hand side real quick, there's an interview progress. This goes to show how far we've done in this. Obviously you don't see anything because we just started. So company name. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and try to cover inventory as well as service. So we're going to say that we sell forklifts online and locally as well as wholesale them and we also service and maintenance them and that way we have a little bit of everything in this company so i'm going to call this company forklift you know keep it simple forklift tax id street address lastly you put in your email put in your website address and then hit next you then have to select your industry uh, there's many to choose from so take your time make sure you got the right one unless you got the obvious choice uh, in our instance because we got a little bit of everything uh, there is no one clear-cut choice so what I did is I'm gonna go ahead and pick the best one that I feel will meet everything so the wholesale and the sales kind of meets all the sales part for the service I will just go ahead and uh, enter it manually in there it's no big deal uh, so you just pretty much pick what the core is and the core is what's with sales and then service was kind of a side gig so i'm going to go ahead and hit next then you choose uh, whether you are a sole proprietor partnership llc corporation s corp uh, for this instance uh, we are going to do s corporation hit next fiscal year keeping it simple january i'm going to hit next and now you get to choose an administrative password. You hit the next. And it wants to know where you want to store it. So I'm going to hit next. You are going to save it in your company files. It's saving. It's saving. It keep the doggies rolling. It's rolling. It's rolling. Keep the doggies rolling. Next, you get to customize some features. As you can see with our progress interview bar over here, we are about a fourth way done, maybe a third way done. Uh, so over here, I'm gonna hit next. And what do you sell? Both services and products. So there you go. I'm gonna hit next. Do you charge sales tax? Yes, we do. Some business refer to estimates as quotes, bids, or proposals, a yes. A lot of it is going to be yes, by the way. There's almost no reason to trim a lot of fat off because you never know when you're going to need it. Um, so if you're not 100% sure, play it safe and go with the yeses, you know, that you want to have them. Do you want to track sales orders before you invoice your customers? Sure, let's go ahead and track them. And then it's going to ask you whether you want to use progressive invoicing. Uh, the recommended is no. I'm going to actually change this one to yes because I'm a yes man. And why am I saying yes to this? Uh, it's because it's going to let me to uh, pay invoices partially as I go if I need it. So for example, a consultant bills at major milestones in the project. That's an example of why you'd want to use it. Here's another example. A flooring contractor bills for partial payment before a job begins. When, more, when materials are delivered and when the job is completed. So, you know, these are milestones payments. And if you deal with a client to where you get payments at certain times or not everything, this is a good tool to use. The next one, if I want to keep track of my own bills, I'm going to hit yes. 
tracking inventory do I want to track inventory it says no I'm gonna make it yes then you're at track time the recommended is no I'm actually gonna stick with no on this one yes we finally have a no uh, just for the reason of uh, most of us will not track things on QuickBooks uh, if you do then yeah it's a good tool to have if you really need it if you uh, build customers for time spent on the projects pay hourly employees and contractors uh, so there's reasons why you'd want to do it it all depends on your business but for most of us I would say it's probably not going to be something we use and I'm going to click next do you have employees yes yes and yes I like yes as to everything that way we can play around with QuickBooks and I can show different examples for different walks of life because not everyone's going to need all these yeses uh, but everyone's going to need a certain different yes at a certain given point, so I'm going to try to cover everything possible. Using accounts in QuickBooks, look that we're almost done. I'm going to hit next. Yes, yeah, beginning of the year. Let's keep make it clean. And then over here is where you get to review income and expense accounts. And it's pretty simple. If you want to go ahead and add a specific account to your chart of accounts, you just click on it, a little check mark comes up you'll see by default that you, there's already preset checks in there which is what is recommended by QuickBooks uh, but don't let that fool you I still would go one at a time and within time as you do new things in QuickBooks you will find yourself adding on to your chart of accounts editing deleting or maybe not deleting maybe more like making some of them inactive okay so uh, don't worry so so much about it at this point but still take a couple minutes and uh, take a look at some of these and see what you feel would make sense for your company. Congratulations, we have victory. You've completed the easy interview. Go to setup. We then get to this screen where it tells you you've got a company file. Now add your info. And once you add your info, it's gonna have a little thing here that says start working. So we have three options over here, add people, add products, and add your bank accounts. I'm going to do one example of each. But as we work on this company throughout these more videos to come, we can add more people as we go along, which we will. We can add more products and services as we go along, as we will. Same thing for bank accounts, credit cards, and all that good stuff. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to show you one example of each. Now here's what's really, really cool. You can import from Outlook, Yahoo, or Gmail, or just paste in Excel or enter manually, which is what we're gonna do. And I'm here at the screen. And uh, I really like this, it's so user-friendly. I can put a name, I can select whether it's a customer, vendor, employee. So let's just go ahead and just basically do one for each. All right, I filled some stuff in. I did one customer over here called Warehouse Direct, company name Warehouse Direct, first name, last name, email address, phone number. I see I have a little scroll over here, scroll to the right, address, zip. And then I'm gonna scroll to the right. We have a vendor called Steel Bargain by Ed Rowe. These are all fictitious by the way. These are not real names, addresses, emails. This is all fictitious. And I put one employee called My Puppet that's not nice but yes oh he's a little spelling here it's my puppet imagine there's really a person out there called my puppet that'd be pretty cool uh, and there you go so at byob.com yes we definitely did byob and i'm going to hit continue it's going to tell you over here contacts are to be added three none of them need to be fixed they all seem to be good Ta-da! We did this for Add People. Now let's add products and services. You will then come across three choices. Service, which is if you're, example, a CPA, you're doing service, or an auto mechanic, you're performing service, unless you sell a part, then that's inventory. Uh, then you have non-inventory part and inventory part. A non-inventory part is when you don't uh, actually count the inventory obviously and then inventory is when you buy a certain amount and you sell a certain amount you definitely want to try to keep track of inventory so we're going to do inventory for the first one hit continue 
and I'm gonna call it forklift mama jamma and this is the big whopper forklift and the price is the price that we would like to sell it for you don't always have to put an amount over here because if your price fluctuates uh, you don't necessarily have to put a price over here so I'm gonna actually leave that one blank a manufacturer part and the cost that usually stays about the same but we can start to entering costs so the entering cost for this one is 15,750 that's our cost and we have three on hand yes we need to sell these puppies hit continue one item is ready as you can see there's no duplicates no item already existing in QuickBooks so this kind of lets you know if there's an error I love this tool over here it's a new tool uh, and so if you do have a duplicate you can fix it but since we don't have any I'm gonna hit continue and we are done with products and services but I'm gonna add one more I'm gonna make it services and so under services I'm gonna do one called engine service engine service on forklifts and the price is to be determined as every service could be different and then I'll do another one just so you can see I could do multiple lines and I'm gonna do over here body service body service on forklifts same thing I'm not gonna put a price as every service could be based on its own and I'm gonna hit continue continue and I have my products and services now I'm gonna add bank accounts right for account name uh, this is where you usually type in Wells Fargo Chase Bank of America whoever you bank with so I'm gonna call this my bank because I own it not account number put in your account number whatever that may be opening balance uh, this is going to be your opening balance uh, as of when you're starting to record this so the opening balance will be 15,025.50 and select an opening balance date this is as of and since we're going to start this January I'm going to just pretend that this is as of December 31st of 2011 it's then going to ask you if you want to order checks uh, so you don't have to handwrite the checks uh, you can order some if you want I'm not I'm just gonna hit continue and we are back to this screen and we are pretty much done add more add more add more has already been done start working it is going to take you to the accounting center and at this point we're gonna end this video and we are going to proceed with more videos to come.